Auto Gefühl US Edition hier vom Huntington Beach, California with the VW Jetta GLI, the updated version. We cannot get this one in Europe. We only have the Golf GTI. This one, basically the sedan version and called GLI. Here also with the red accentuation and this honeycomb front grille, sporty look but already saying, hey, I'm sporty, but I'm also still this compromise between everyday driver and some fun sporty vehicle. Daytime running light, you can see the accentuations here around and red contrast here in a vertical style. A great contrast to the moonstone gray color. I think this overall color combination looks really cool. The trim, by the way, is called Autobahn trim. Yeah, that's of course something we also have on our channel a lot when we are in Germany. Here at the side, you can already see 18 inch wheels are standard for the GLI Autobahn in a high gloss black styling. 4 meters 85 or 187 inches is the length of the Jetta GLI and its front wheel drive. We're soon going to take at the engine spec and you can see it has this classic sedan line. This is the main difference then to the Golf GTI which is this hatchback. Very interesting at the rear, first of all, I think it's a pretty sleek styling, then a small contrasting winglet on the top part. The rear lamps here have this signature light in the lower part and then you have real exhaust tips here. Yay! And what about the sound? Under the hood we have a 2 liter turbocharged petrol engine with 228 horsepower. Acceleration figure is just over 6 seconds. Now it's 6.4 seconds to 60 miles an hour or around 1 kilometers an hour. The key light and simple, it is just as plain black, but I think it's actually better than all these high gloss black keys. Then door closing sound here, that's actually quite solid. Then instead of the doors, you have some red contrast stitches here and also this special GI type red line decor element. What I find quite nice as for detail is that we have a top galvanization here at the window levers. Then the sporty interior, GLI steering wheel with this insert, just like the GTI steering wheel we know. I criticize that these here are capacitive buttons, hashtag capacitive BS. They look cool, but then again, controlling them while driving is a little bit tougher. Seats in the Autobahn trim here, sadly only animal skin. They offer no alternative. Something sportier and more animal friendly would have been good here. And by the way, have you seen that? Matte black is the thing here also around the windows and also here. So on the one hand, you might think that might look cheaper. On the other hand, high gloss black collects scratches and fingerprints and so on. So what do you prefer? Tell me in the comments. Seat ergonomics, really good. It's very comfortable here indeed. Also for tall people, 189, six for two. Still leaves some headroom. And this is also equipped here with the glass roof. You can slide this one. I, I like it when it's just a manual shade. Why not? It's so quick and easy. And then you can also actually open this one right here. That's then electric. Perspective on the steering wheel, actually quite good size. New here updated, digital instruments in 10.25 inch. On the right side, eight inch infotainment system, but that's the one, I think it's good. It still has the manual volume knob. And on the right side, this tune knob, for example, or when you are in the car internal GPS, then you could zoom in and out with that. The digital instruments also change the color according to the driving mode. In lower part, we have still a real classic climate unit. I really appreciate that. And either seven speed dual clutch transmission like this one, or you also get a six speed manual. And with this button here, you activate the choices for the DCC, dynamic chassis control. That's the adaptive suspension. Then you have here the driving mode selection, comfort, change the steering wheel, and also the throttle input and the suspension sport and a little bit stiffer everything. The most thing you will do with this infotainment system, here's an easy menu structure, will be using Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's also available wireless, but you can choose cable or wireless. I really like the decor elements. What about you? Tell me in the comments. Then here, what I don't like is in the middle console, the cup holders are not adaptive, rather plain look. However, what I appreciate against the Golf GTI here in the Jetta GLI, there's this really large storage area. For cereal bars, by the way, that will not be eaten in the vehicle. <laughs> and then also here USB-C charging. What's also notable here on the inside is gray and not black. On the one hand, you might say, ah, that doesn't fit. But by that, you can better see what's on the inside. It's not just a dark hole. Rear seating, 
although this is front wheel drive, there's still a middle tunnel legroom. This actually fits here for four tall adults. So even though this is set to my driving position and headroom close, but also directly fits. And the rear comfort here is actually quite decent. Look at that. I appreciate these little details, a small GTI badge, even for the rear floor mats here. GTI? Oh, GLI, yes, thank you. <laughs> As for the trunk or the boot, well, first of all, I criticize that when you close it, it really sounds really bad. Partly, of course, also comes from the number plate here. Then also when you open it here, do you prefer it when it's like covered in black plastic or do you think it's better when it's just metal like this? I think there's like pro and con. At least it fits to the rest of the paint. Hmm. Then here, 14.1 cubic feet is the volume and here the normal length is 113 in meters or 44 inches. Well usable and underneath you can also put a spare tire and you can see you can also fold the seats. You have to unlock it from here and then push them through. Driving part with the Jetta GLI, limited slip differential. Let's see how that goes. Front wheel drive only. And we start sports mode as shifting mode and we turn in the steering wheel and go all the way through. Look at that. That was amazing, right? Of course you shouldn't really do that and I'm not doing that every day, but this was a demonstration of how well this system actually works. And you can also repeat it other way around really doesn't you know rip on your steering wheel you know so usually when you have like a lot of performance front wheel drive cars and so on it can happen actually that you lose you know the control of the vehicle or something but here here also with the DSG when the U-turn is actually too short or too crisp back forth easy solution some sound actuation here in the interior but the exterior exhaust sound we heard it earlier is actually not too bad so it feels really very agile and is so well to control you can see here i hit the throttle quite hard i don't have to correct on the steering wheel very well done also here from this lsd limited slip differential right not the other LSD. LSD. <laughs> so here turning on the highway number one very beautiful road of course and every lane change is a lot of fun it has a very crisp and direct steering, especially here in the sport mode. You have a little bit more resistance, so there's no dead zone area in the steering. When you go to the comfort mode, you have a little bit less resistance, so it feels softer. I would really prefer the sporty setting. At the same time, DCC, dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension. When we go to the sport mode, I also get more feedback from the suspension. But still, even here in the sport mode, it is very comfortable. This is a car that presents the compromise between an everyday driver and still something more spicy, something fun for your everyday driving life. And it works very well indeed. So what I would prefer as for a driving setting could be, for example, Let's say you want a little bit more comfort on your daily commute. Then you could pick like a normal comfort mode via the custom settings. And in the custom settings, you can adjust it. And then, for example, set the suspension to soft, but the steering to sport. That Oh, that's also your preset in this, um, in this very mode. So that is what is being done quite often. And I think that's also quite good setting. Still, as I said, if you are in the sport mode, the suspension is still soft or comfortable enough. What's also happening here in the sport mode, shifting up later, shifting down earlier, so you always are at higher RPM. That's of course also helpful for sporty driving. You definitely have enough punch. As for these all season tires, they're fine. Let's take it that way. Of course, yes, you have more performance with pure summer tires, no doubt about that. You also lose something in the acceleration figure and so on but you can live with this compromise. It's always about pro and con. Of course, with the all-season tires, you also have advantages because it's just more convenient. That's also the reason you know, they went for that. Yeah, It really depends on what you expect from the vehicle, but it still feels nice and sporty. And also, as for the dampening from the tires, having here 18-inch wheels, it's absolutely fine. This combination, 80-inch wheels and the adaptive suspension gives you enough comfort. Here at 55 miles per hour, so almost one kilometer an hour. Noise in the insulation is also good. There's not much wind noise, there's not much tire noise, everything on a very good standard. 
And when I do some lane changing here, like yeah, it's always a lot of fun, it's really cool, doesn't shake up or something, it feels kind of like the Golf GTI. So between the Golf GTI hatch and the Jetta GLI sedan, you don't feel much difference in the driving feel. They're both very good, and especially the handling. You feel that you are in control all the time. You do exactly what you want, and the vehicle does exactly what you want. That's, to me, one of the best aspects. It has these compact dimensions. It's not really long, it's not really wide, and that is also a reason why it's so much fun. And to me, the key thing about this vehicle is really this everyday compromise, and also, of course, the relatively affordable price. Of course, maybe cars used to be cheaper in the past, but here the thing is you have already a car that is fun, that is sporty in the driving, but you don't pay as much money as for a true sports car, yet at the same time you have this performance also when you want to go like slalom or like, it's no problem at all. The DSG, by the way, should you go for the manual or the DSG? Well, in traffic, of course, it's an advantage to have the dual clutch transmission. It's just more relaxing, easier, and so on. At the same time, you can use this automatic downshifting, especially if you are in the S sports mode, then just pin it down. Then you have to wait a little bit, but then it comes. The alternative would be you can also use the shifting pedals. So if I want to accelerate a little bit quicker, yeah, use the shifting pedals and I'm in a lower gear and so on. So that is also something you can do. And that's of course also fun to use the shifting pedals here, play a little bit with the RPM. Of course, if you are like a purist car enthusiast, then of course you could also go for the manual version and enjoy that. Here once again, accelerating out. It's not a rear-wheel driven car, but let's say they made this sporty front-wheel drive concept as good as possible. Of course, a pure rear-wheel drive would get you out of the corners a little bit better because the rear comes around a little bit better and so on. But here, no traction loss and so on. And I think with the horsepower figure they have here, that's better than some of the vehicles that are tuned even higher. I mean, there are sometimes like this two-liter four-cylinder, which go like 300, even sometimes 400 horsepower, and they're like, what the hell? Of course, then with all-wheel drive, but then there are even stronger just front-wheel drive versions, and at some point, I think it's just too much. And here, I think they picked the right tune. You don't really need much more power just via the front axle. More power, I think, just makes sense when you have an all-wheel drive or rear axle alone and so on. So this everyday compromise is really cool, and you have your Jetta life spiced up. Oh, there we go. Here, this is the, a normal Jetta, an SE trim. Also a little bit little over one, but yeah, you can also see from the exterior that <laughs> we have the one that is spiced up, and we definitely feel it here in the driving part, every single time go around the corner or change the lane. Well, well, of course, when we're talking about the Autobahn trim here, we have more Autobahn episodes also for you from Germany with the Golf GTI or also with the Golf R.